The speed of light is the ultimate speed limit. Nothing in this universe can break this speed barrier. There is only one way to reach to the limit and that is the particle has to be massless. Our universe seems to be programmed like a computer program that only allows certain set of input values. If we enter different values, the program crashes. In the same way, if we try to break the speed barrier by moving faster than the speed of light, the grand system of our universe gets crashed and weird things start to happen, like mass of objects becomes imaginary. Time starts to move in the backward direction, which means you would die before you were born, or simply the effect precedes the cause. So, you should not think of the speed of light as something moving through space. The speed of light is very special. As your speed becomes comparable to the speed of light, the time itself slows down due to time dilation. Your mass increases and your length contracts due to length contraction. But as soon as you reach exactly at the speed of light, the flow of time completely stops. Your mass becomes infinite and your length in the direction of your travel becomes zero. So, if we could somehow reach to the speed of light, we would neither feel space nor time. When the object is not moving with respect to an observer, then its mass is called the rest mass. It is also known as the invariant mass. But the relativistic mass of the object depends on its velocity with respect to an observer. We also call it the moving mass. Now, the question arises, after all, why the mass of the object increases when it moves? And is the relativistic mass real or just an illusion? In this video, I will try to explain it. But first, you need to know what actually the mass is. Let me tell you that nothing in the universe that has mass can travel at the speed of light. To travel at the speed of light, the object or the particle must be massless. For example, photons, which are completely massless, travel at the speed of light. Even if the mass of any particle is millions of times smaller than the mass of an electron, it cannot achieve the speed of light, although it can go very close to the light speed. Because as the particle would approach the speed of light, it would be heavier and heavier, and at the speed of light, its mass would be infinite. So it would need infinite energy to accelerate, which is practically not possible. So any particle with non-zero mass cannot reach to the ultimate speed limit, the speed of light. We know the Einstein's famous mass energy equivalence formula. E is equals to mc square, where E is energy, m is mass and c is the speed of light in a vacuum. So what does it mean? It actually means that mass and energy are not two different things. They are interconvertible. A tiny piece of mass can be converted into a huge amount of energy. Or in other words, we can say that an immense amount of energy is stored even in a single tiny particle. Now let's come back to our topic of discussion. Why increase in mass is observed when any object approaches the speed of light? We know that moving objects have energy associated with them, known as the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy increases with increase in the speed of the moving object. Hence, the total energy of the object is increased when it moves. The moving particle having mass not only has energy stored in it in the form of its mass, but it also has immense energy associated with it in the form of kinetic energy. As by the mass energy equivalence formula, we know that mass and energy are actually the same thing and also interchangeable. So we need to take into account this kinetic energy too. Here you need to understand that if you are traveling in a train moving at the speed of light, then you will not feel that your body has become heavier. You will not experience any change in your mass. But for the observers outside the train, you are having very high extra energy 
because of your motion in the form of kinetic energy. So if these observers somehow measure your mass, you would see much heavier in comparison to your rest mass. But as soon as you come to rest, your relativistic mass comes down to rest mass. So this is the reason why the mass of a moving object seems to increase. Let's now understand it mathematically. We will now see how changes in mass, time and length are observed at relativistic speed. Let's see this formula. m is equals to m0 divided by square root of 1 minus v square by c square. Here m is the relativistic mass of the moving object. This small m is the rest mass and v is the velocity of the object. And here c represents the speed of light in vacuum. The factor 1 divided by square root of 1 minus v square by c square is called the Lorentz factor, gamma. By observing this formula, you can easily understand when the speed of the object is negligible in comparison to the speed of light, that is v is less less than c, then v square divided by c square becomes negligible and relativistic mass is same to that of the rest mass. This is the reason why we observe no change in mass of the object when its speed is nothing in comparison to the speed of light. But when the object achieves the speed of light, that is, at v equals to c, the relativistic mass of the object becomes infinite. But at speeds higher than the speed of light, that is, when v is greater than c, the mass becomes imaginary. You can do this simple math by your own by putting some values in the formula. We know that the imaginary value of mass is not possible. So it is clear that it is not possible to achieve speeds higher than the speed of light. In the same way, you can analyze the following formula for time for three different cases. That is when v is less less than c, v is equals to c and v is greater than c. The formula is t is equals to t naught divided by square root of 1 minus v square by c square. The same as the previous formula, but here m has been replaced by t. You will see when v is less than c, but comparable to c, the time dilates or in other words, when you reach near the speed of light, time passes slower for you. This is called time dilation. Moving at a relativistic speed not only affects mass and time, but also the length. If you move at a speed which is close to the speed of light, your length will contract in the direction of your travel. It is clear by the following formula. L is equals to L0 square root of 1 minus V square by C square. This phenomena is called the length contraction. So friends, you saw here how the time and different properties of matter change when it travels at the speed of light. So guys, if you found the video interesting and informative, then please like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching.